This lesson's on a concept called uh, data validation, and I can see this being very useful. Now, this is a sheet that we're using every week to calculate people's pay. The only data entry required is going to be in the production number of our employees. That's going to change from week to week. Now, in order to prevent crazy mistakes from being input into our payroll, right, because this is going to reflect what these people get paid, I can restrict these values so that they don't get get out of control either too high or too low. So it'll kind of flag something that probably isn't right. So I would select the cells first, and then I would go to, I'm going to data here and then data validation. And I've played with this a little bit, so it's already got some things set. So I'm going to just get rid of those and <coughs> should be starting with a clear slate. I believe I am. So now here you have this list to choose from. Um, so by allowing any value, uh, I mean, not, you have no validation whatsoever. So now whole number, decimal, right? So this whole number will not allow decimal, something with a decimal. Decimal will allow, right? List, you can do a, a choose from list. So if, it is, if it's not on my list, then you can't choose it. And this can also allow you to create a drop down list, which is kind of neat as well. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, you can make sure that it's a date or time, or you can specify a certain amount of text and if they go any longer it'll say this is too long all right and then you got custom which gets it gets kind of crazy so i'm going to stick with some basic stuff we're going to say whole number between all right so here you can type your minimum and your maximums so if you know that anything lower than 150 is probably not possible i would just say 150 minimum and then if you know that anything over let's say 220 is not possible you go 220 and then you'd hit OK. Um, now, if anybody tries to type anything in these cells that don't, let's say that I try to type 120 here and I hit enter, the standard message you're going to get is the value you entered is not valid, right? And then you have to retry or cancel, all right? And th that applies to all of these things. So quick, easy, simple. Now, I'm gonna complicate it just a little bit. I'm gonna select these cells again gonna go back here gonna go back here and if you want to, uh, to get rid of the ones that applied that were applied I would just clear all and okay and I'm just gonna come back here again and now what I want to do is show you how to use this list thing. So I'm going to go to list. And I'm going to go to source. Now what I've done is I typed out a list of available numbers that can be used. Anything other than that will, will be shown as not being valid. So this could be a, a list of names, right? If you're asking for city, and you list the cities, and if the, if the name of the city isn't on the list, you would get an error. So there's a lot of really practical uses for this. So now that I'm done, I'm just gonna hit enter, and then I'm gonna hit okay. So now, when I go back to this area, uh, not only am I restricted to be between 150 and 215, right? So I'm getting the same thing here, so I'm gonna hit cancel, but I'm also getting the actual list that people can choose from. And then I can input my information that way. Now, I'm going to try once again to delete all of this. I'm going to go to data validation. And um, I want to clear all, but I want to apply to everything. So I'm going to clear all here to start over. That seemed to work just fine. Um, again, you, you can set your own, whatever way you want. And the other thing I find very, very valuable I think I'm gonna go so I'm gonna go back to whole number I'm gonna say between and I'll go 150 and it, it's not going to affect anything that's already typed it's only going to affect things that are about to be typed so if I go 205 here it's not gonna flag the fact that this is 206 it's not gonna do anything about that but here is where you can help people doing the data entry you can let them know um, that it's an error and to type something between 150 and 205, uh, let's say, right? Is that what I had? Yeah, all right. 
And then the error message can also be customized, right? And have a little bit of fun with this. Uh, and then we can apply that. Now I'm noticing I made a mistake because when I'm clicking on here, it's already telling me there's an error and that's not right. So I made a mistake here. And for the input message, I should not have called this error. I should have typed must type. There we go. Must type, right? And then 150 to 205. And I should have selected all the cells before doing that. So it's good that I make some mistakes in the video sometimes so that you don't make the same mistake. So must type. And then okay, and they all, now they all say the same. And if somebody does type something, you notice how this is already 206, but if I go to type 206, right? So here it's saying, hey dummy, 150 to 205. And then I can go cancel, and then I can try and 205. Uh, a couple more things on data validation. If uh, for some reason you're looking for uh, the area of your sheet that has data, uh, data validation, you can go to the home and then find, and then find the area with data validation and it selects the area that's got that. And in order to get rid of the data validation, you go back to data, select the ones you want, and then what you'd want to do is you'd want to clear all and okay, and now they've been deleted and there's no more data validation set for that area. So those are the main things you need to know for data validation. Uh, I, I can, once again, see this being very practical. It would eliminate mistakes. And if you're trying to drop to create a drop-down list for people to choose from, uh, for cities or states or countries, uh, that kind of thing, uh, that's also very useful. It'll save them time doing data entry, which could be kind of long and tedious.